let's um let's watch this your lady is her name is called alice hamilton and um she has some very not so nice things to say about some of the people that i featured on the random show um i'm sure some of you guys will enjoy it so let's play what she has to say Thank you guys for coming to this. Thank you. And give it up for Miranda and JP one more time. That was fucking awesome. I am way too ADHD to put something like this together. So thank you guys so much for everything that you did. Uh, thank you for coming to this. Uh, please don't heckle me. Like I know every single one of you personally. If any of you yells at me, I'll just be like, Zach, get the fuck out. <laughs> okay. So let's all be chill. Uh, yeah, so uh, Chris D'Elia got in trouble. <laughs> uh, Chris D'Elia getting in trouble is a lot like that clip of Kanye West interrupting Taylor Swift at the VMAs. Still funny. Uh, <laughs> if any of you guys don't know, Chris D'Elia is a terrible stand-up comedian who was accused of essentially trying to crowdsource child porn from his underage fans, whom he was also having sex with, allegedly, you know. <laughs> uh, and look, before we get into all of that, I just wanna say that Chris D'Elia is not funny at all. Like, I don't give a fuck how many people laughed at his jokes. People used to laugh at blackface, okay? Sometimes the audience is wrong. <laughs> Yo, this lady is actually funny. You know how um, you know how refreshing it is to listen to somebody actually tell some actual jokes after listening to that ten minute horrible disaster class of a comedy set from Brendan Schaub that I secretly recorded. This is actually funny. This is really funny. Her name is Alice Hamilton. Um, I think you should. Can you see the name there on the screen? I'll put it up there. That that's her name, and it's called. This is what the special is called. It's called Sex Criminal. Check it out, Alex Hamilton. It's really good, man. Really, really, really good. I really recommend it. Please um take a take note of it. Alex Hamilton. It's just uploaded the other day. Absolutely banging. I actually don't know why this came out, actually. What is this to do with? Is this to do with the, the Moontown Festival? Is this just a set she uploaded? But yeah, she went she went at it. She went at it. She's she's delivering the goods. Let's continue. And what struck me about like the day that Chris D'Elia got canceled, a day that will live in infamy, is uh, the fact that like everyone defending him had such weak defenses. You know, they were like, it's legal to fuck high schoolers in Nevada. <laughs> if you have ever Googled age of consent laws by state, just go to your nearest prison and self-surrender. Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, I know it's legal to fuck high schoolers in Nevada. Bestiality is legal in five states, but if Chris D'Elia fucked a cow, you wouldn't be like, well, hang on, was he in Kentucky? Because <laughs> if he was in Kentucky, then he technically didn't do anything wrong. So, um, something of an intellectual. Uh, <laughs> God, it's just so fucking absurd to me. Like the idea that this man was accused of sticking his dick in people's kids and I'm supposed to give a fuck about which side of Lake Tahoe he was on. <laughs> like I True, and that's actually something that I think I must have been even guilty of at the time when it was all happening. Because, huh, how do you say this without sounding crass? Technically, technically you can't say what he did was against the law because i think the girl that he was contacting that was the one that was really sketch again if you if i had a daughter would i want chris Lee anywhere near my daughter no way shape or form get the fuck out of here if you're my friend you're dead to me bury under the joe if i see you in real life i might even punch you but as an observer from the outside in that doesn't know anything to do with the guy i'm not having any responsibility not had any contact with him i don't give a shit about his life i'm not a diddler myself i don't care about you know flipping you know scoring the youngest girls and shit it's not something that's ever kind of tickled my fancy in that regard if anything I, you know 
the cackling sound and the screeching voices of girls that are under the age of 21 always annoys me so i've never understand this good thing that guys have where they desire to have the youngest girl possible that they can get a hold of i don't really get that but if we're being technical if we're being really just by the letter of the law he the thing that was sketchy was the one where he contacted the girl where she was um she was underage and then she said i'm not i'm not legal yet and then he then contacted her the day after she got legal right that was really sketchy it's like okay you're not eight, seven you're not 18 yet but i can't wait until you're 18 like it's like i remember this this someone shared this this clip of this pastor somewhere or this preacher that was um hooking up with one of the um one of her uh one of his um churchgoers who happened to be like a young kid and i think the facebook poster was like the facebook post was like something like oh i'm so happy you're 18 now so we can be together like celebrating that she turned legal or something like sickening stuff that of course is obviously disgusting but i don't necessarily so that was obviously creepy and disgusting but is it really against the law to contact somebody when they're underage and then they say i'm not legal they say okay call cool, back away then come back later probably not and the fact that he's into younger girls is creepy and odd and really disturbing maybe but is it illegal no it's just an interest it's just like a like it's like when people like i don't know it's like girls that like older dudes because they've got money maybe you like younger girls because i don't want to say why because it's nasty but you get what i mean isn't it? you get what i mean I just fucking don't. Uh, people were like, look, some of the high schoolers wanted to fuck Dalia. And I'm like, I know. But wanting to fuck Chris Dalia is actually a sign that you're not mature enough for sex. <laughs> Bitch, I don't care if you're 30, you not ready, okay? <laughs> People were like, well, maybe he didn't know that the girls DMing him were in high school. And I'm like, yeah, if you're Justin Bieber's favorite comedian, then you do know you're gonna get DM'd by a bunch of high schoolers. Don't fuck any of them. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, this whole thing is Bieber's fault for having shitty taste in comedy. <laughs> All right, and you know what? Just in case anyone does think that Dalia didn't know what he was doing was wrong, in 2010, he tweeted, having sex with a minor is wrong. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> fuck that dude. People have these shittiest defenses. They're like, technically, he's not a pedophile. He's actually an afibophile. That shit had me feeling like the bitch for Mean Girls. I'm like, stop trying to make a fibophile happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> People were like, you know, teenage girls, their brains are still developing, but their bodies are mature. Ew. Um, <laughs> gross. <laughs> Uh, two things. One, that underdeveloped brain is the thing you're damaging the most when you assault a minor. And second, I don't give a fuck how big a pair of titties a high school girl has. Leave her alone. Um, it's fucking gross, dude. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys saw that insane apology video that Dalia posted on YouTube. One of the most unhinged things I've ever seen in my fucking life. He just kept saying, all of my relationships were consensual and legal. And I'm like, yeah, the word legal is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in that sentence. <laughs> He apologized for cheating. I'm like, no one is upset at you for cheating because nobody thought you were faithful. Um, <laughs> there's, there's rumor that Chris, Chris D'Elia was swiping on Tinder in the back of the Laugh Factory the night his son was born. We know you're a cheater, okay? <laughs> no one gives a shit. Uh, like. Boo! Okay, there we go. Back, 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 back. 
So, um, what I was saying, actually, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll start doing it differently. What I was saying was like, I feel like for whatever reason, it's okay to go up in relationships. So if you're somebody that's like 20 something or 30 something and you're dating somebody that's like 10 years, 20 years, you're old, you're senior, people don't really look at you that or weirdly. It's not really something that's kind of like, um, it's not like something that's looked down upon societally, but it, in society, sorry. But if you're somebody who is 60, 50 and you're dating somebody who's 25, 24, 23, 22, 19, 18, that's when it starts to get a bit weird. And I, I don't really understand why that is the case. If anything, people should be grossed out either way, either when it's going down or whether it's going up, especially when it's something that happens to be like a kink, something that you look for, like you're looking for people who are younger. You're not just dating people because, you know, you have a connection with them or you like them or whatnot. No, it's just because they're of their age mostly. It's just a bit strange, you know, of a, of a thing to have, of an interest. Like I'm only dating you because of your age. It's like, oof, I don't know, brother. That sounds a bit mad, isn't it? That sounds a bit insane, but maybe, maybe you're looking too deep into it. I don't really know. Anyway, let's play. It's so fucking stupid. It's clearly, it's clear that his like plan was if I call myself a cheater, maybe everyone else will stop calling me a pedophile. And it's like, no, I'm gonna still do it though. <laughs> like, are you seriously trying to imply that Netflix edited your ass out a whole movie because they found out you were unfaithful to the random woman you accidentally got pregnant? Like, I'm <laughs> not fucking stupid. You know, Oof, this lady really hates Crystal Lee, isn't it? <laughs> like, you got dropped by your agents. You don't get dropped by your agents for cheating. Are you trying to tell me that CAA, the agency that represents Mel Gibson, found out that you cheated, called you up, and was like, I thought you were a good man? <laughs> Fuck out of here. She's funny, though. She's fucking funny. <laughs> He was like, uh, he, in that stupid video, he was like, I, I just don't know what's wrong with having sex with somebody that wants to have sex with you. I'm like, well, does she have school in the morning? Because <laughs> if she does, that's what's wrong. God, I, I can't get mad at Chris D'Elia for lying because if he tells the truth, he'll go to prison. So I, I guess I can just get mad at all the people who believe the bullshit in that stupid video. Because, like, uh, some people that I, I, I once respected saw that video and then were like, I hope Chris D'Elia gets the help he needs. I'm like, that is not what you're supposed to hope. Okay, you're supposed to hope that the victims get his home address and then go to his house and kill him and his entire family. Jesus Christ. Okay, I hope that they drop kick his baby into a hot tub. <laughs> Just someone said here, what is it? Um, what did it say? Uh, uh, I agree because, yeah, was it um, Faisal El Haji said, I agree with her. I hate Chris more because he's unfunny hack. Be honest, guys. Like, <laughs> I don't mind Chris's stand up, but one thing that was clear because I think I got introduced to Chris D'Elia through podcasting first, then I listened to his stand up comedy. I think he is way funnier as a podcaster then he is a stand-up like it's not even close and then when he gets on stage if you know some of you guys have seen he has that weird voice inflection thing that he does or that weird voice in general he has this weird like kind of baby kiddie voice and he does this weird um he kind of like does this weird walk where he kind of walks like you know like a duck like i i, I don't i didn't really understand that i don't really get where where that's from I don't find that to be funny at all. But on podcasts, he's hilarious. Like, there's so many clips of his... Like, think about the clips of him on podcasts that are in the millions of views. Like, the um, oops and um, whatever, all that, you know... Um, yeah, all that stuff with, um, you know, with flipping Will Sasser and all them guys, right? And, and, and Brian Callen. Those clips are in the hundreds of thousands, if not the millions, in terms of views. Because they're hilarious, those clips. But you're not really going to have the same energy for a stand-up comedy are you it's like mm, not really so i get it in some sense but but then oddly enough everybody in that la comedy scene when he was around popping they would always say he crushed he's amazing life which i'm probably sure he was because of how physical he is and how dorky he looks on stage i can understand why that would be funny but i never got it 
I never understood why people thought this guy was like, okay, he's the best because you listen to one Bill Burr set and you're like, no, this guy's clearly better. Or you listen to a Sebastian Man- Manasalco who I think is like the better version of what Chris Alia does in terms of physicality and being dorky on stage. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think we can end that lineage. Um, <laughs> I'm fucking kidding. All right. You know what? Uh, actually, I'm not kidding. Uh, if you were offended by that joke, I just have one thing to say. I'm not sorry for any joke that I've ever told in my entire life. I don't give a fuck what you think about it. Figure your own shit out if your feelings are hurt. I'm not sure I understand the, the point of bringing up someone's tweets on stage as part of your joke thing, though. That sounds a bit weird. Holding somebody to their tweets is a little bit lame, especially if you're a stand-up comedian. You're meant to be able to say what the fuck you want. You're meant to actually be funny on on your Twitter feed as well, right? You're not meant to sit on there being making political statements or, you know, advocating for a political party or whatever nonsense. Right? I mean, you're meant to be on there telling jokes. You're meant to be on there trying to take people away, trying to take people's attention away from the horrors of everyday life, not reminding them that you're also aware of what's going on in Ukraine. No one's tuning into you for that. So I don't really see the tweet thing as being a... Sm- I don't really get that, but hey... Uh, I'm kidding. I want to apologize for that last joke. Um, That shit was way over the line. It was completely uncalled for. (laughs) Leave leave the kid alone, all right? It's not his fault that his dad is allegedly, but I'm pretty sure a pedophile. Um, (laughs) Fuck. Satire requires clarity, lest it contribute to the thing it's trying to criticize. So let me be clear, leave the kid alone, okay? Jesus Christ. That Chris Leah, he's always on Instagram, like using his son as a human shield. Like, look at me, you guys. I'm just a father. I'm like, use some other things too, though. I, I ain't forget about all that other stuff, man. This lady's good. This lady's God. good. <laughs> I am anti gun, which is why I'm going to shoot Chris Leah in the chest with a crossbow. Um, Yo, this is brutal. She is absolutely going for it with an axe. She's kicking down his door, kicking his kid out of the window, strangling his wife with one hand and then flipping, slashing Chris over the face with his with an axe with another hand while she cackles and talks to her friend on her earpods. Like, she is not having it. It's going to take him 55 minutes to die. That's plenty of time to think of all your mistakes. Uh, I'm kidding. Leave him alone. Actually, I have some really good reasons why nobody should hurt Chris D'Elia, his kid, his family, any of them. All right. Uh, because due process can't do anything about guys like D'Elia, Chris D'Elia's punishment is going to be a two-parter. Uh, the first part was hilariously losing his entire career on Twitter. The second part is going to be when his son grows up, finds the Wikipedia page, and then immediately and permanently loses all respect. (laughs) Once that kid types his dad's name into Google, Chris D'Elia ain't gonna be able to tell him shit. Like, uh, hey son, I I think you shouldn't play so many video games. You shouldn't have fucked so many teenagers, dad, but you did it though. Get the fuck out of my room, pedophile. You know? (laughs) That's actually just how all rich white boys speak to their fathers. (laughs) I get the fuck out of my room, pedophile. And the dad is like, I'm a judge, Connor. You know, like, <laughs> God, uh, I cannot wait. Like, you can't hurt Chris and his family. Like, I can't wait until that kid gets older and then brings home his first girlfriend. You know, like, hey, dad, this is Emma. And oh, you don't have to hug her, dad. <laughs> <laughs> no handshakes, no high fives. You don't have to touch her at all. Uh, Actually, we're not even staying. I'm just getting my stuff. We're going to go see a movie. I would ask you for a ride to the movie theater, but Emma's mom says that she's not allowed to get in the car with you. Jesus Christ. She's going to tie my jumper up to the back of her bicycle. She can pull me on my skateboard. (laughs) Got to leave now because the movie starts in three hours. I have hated Chris D'Elia for so fucking long. Ever since I saw his first Comedy Central Presents, like I distinctly remember my sister being like, can you turn this off? Like... And I was like, yeah, this dude fucking sucks. <laughs> no pain came out. It was April of 2020. We're in the pandemic. I had nothing better to do. So I just like lit a joint and turned it on with an open mind. And I actually laughed at a bunch of the jokes. I couldn't fucking believe it. I, I, I turned that shit off halfway through and just sat there. I was like, oh my God, I hate this dude so much. And it's not his jokes. Like, 
I hate this dude and it's personal. <laughs> I swear to God, like, I sat there kind of feeling like a bad person. I was like, why do you hate this dude so much? Like, you don't have a good reason to feel so strongly about this motherfucker. I tried to stop hating him for, like, five minutes, and I couldn't. <laughs> After five minutes, I just had to go on black. I don't really like this guy. Uh, and then he got in trouble, but he's not the only one who got in trouble, so let's talk about the rest of them. Jesus Christ. Love her. I love her. She's fucking going for it. Got in trouble. Louis C.K. was a big one. Uh, I remember when he got in trouble because all of my guy friends were like, uh, that is terrible. Because he was my favorite comedian. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's why it sucks. Uh, <laughs> God, they didn't let Louis C.K. do the voice of the dog in The Secret Life of Pets 2. And I was like, come on. Dogs have been masturbating in front of unwilling participants since the dawn of time. Okay, <laughs> how are you going to take away the role my man was born to play? <laughs> I think that, like, a lot of confusion happens because some guys don't realize that, like, you're supposed to be naked with someone. Uh, you are not supposed to be naked at someone. <laughs> That's uh, an important difference there. Uh, but to be again, maybe I I'm misremembering the story. But if we, if we, if the if we if if we take the accounts of the actual women who were involved in this situation to be true, or if we believe what they said, I remember them saying at the time that they consented to Louis C.K. doing it. Like he never just got out of the blue and just pulled his dick out and just did it without us ask, without asking. It was something that I think, even was it Sarah, Sarah Silverman said, Louis C.K. asked her once to jack off in front of her. And she said, yeah, whatever, you can do what you want, as long as you don't touch me. And he did it, and he jacked off, and he whatever, he finished, and they continued on. It's just a kink that he had, I guess. Um, it's strange, it's weird. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not really a fan or a believer of trying to hook up with people in your industry or your peer group. I think it just leads to problems that you don't need to have. But it's not like he did it unwillingly. He's not, no, it's, it's not like he did it without permission. He always kind of asks again. It's creepy, don't get me wrong, but he still asks like a normal human. They said no, and he would then say, okay, cool, and continue. So I think these women, if I'm not mistaken, he said they said yes, then they changed their mind after the fact, which they're allowed to do, fair enough. But I don't think it was a, fa a thing of him just jumping out of, the, out, of the, out of the room or behind the plant and just saying, hey, my dick's out. Do you know what I mean? He definitely asked, but then it's still... It's like if that's your favorite comedian and you hear that he likes to just stand in front of women and just jack off. <laughs> it's hard to look at him the same way, isn't it? And to be a fan of him. And again, it's a kink. We all have our kinks that, you know, they're private. You don't need to be revealing them to anybody. But when they're made public, it can be a bit hard to look at the person the same way again, isn't it? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, when uh, Louis C.K. got cancelled, uh, a bunch of people were saying, like, you can't get rid of his career, he's a comedy genius, we need his input on, like, culture. And I just want to say that that argument does not apply to Crystal <laughs> We can easily afford to lose that guy. <laughs> we do not need him around at all. Uh, Brad Williams did not get accused of anything, he ratted... So let's quickly say, I think um, what people are saying on the thing, um, Dash X, um, he's saying, I remember, I'm trying to remember, but it wasn't an employee assistant dynamic. You know? No, if I'm not mistaken, the Louis C.K. one, they were two uh, up and coming comedians themselves. I'm pretty sure they had a podcast or something. Two women who we kind of knew. Maybe they were openers for him, whatever, but they were definitely comedians. And like I said, he, he already did it to Sarah Silverman. She said in a podcast or a show, an interview, that he, Louis C.K. once requested, hey, can I wank in front of you? And she said, yeah. So it's clearly a thing that he was known to do. It's just that in this case, I guess the women maybe after the fact felt uncomfortable. Maybe it was one of those things where at the time he was asking to wank in front of them, maybe they were working on something. And if you're a woman and somebody's in business with you and you're trying to keep them sweet so that they can give you a job so that you can pay your bill and put your kid through school and then they ask you for a sexual favor, it can be a very uncomfortable position to be in because you feel as if like, oh, if I don't do this, he's going to fire me and then I won't be able to pay my bills. Do you know what I mean? So you're put in a weird predicament. So maybe that was the reason why it was a bit of a mad thing. But in general, like I said, across the board, just don't 
fuck your peers. Don't fuck your industry peeps. Don't fuck people in the same industry. I just don't think it's worth it. Unless you, unless it's like a Tom Segura, Christina P thing where you end up meeting your soulmate and your life partner and the mother of your children, cool. But for the most part, if you're going to hook up with people, just hook up with your fans, man. There's plenty of them of age that are willing to come on that stage and suck up in front of a group of people. Like, there's plenty of people that arrive there probably with their boyfriends that are ready to ditch them just to hook up with you. Why would you need to go and destroy the sanctity of your little scene that you have going on or make it awkward when you come into a room or have people have to decide who to want to be friends with based on who it just doesn't make any sense i just don't think it's person i just don't think it's worth it added himself out brad williams was on a podcast and they were like tell me a crazy story from your days on the road and the story brad williams chose to tell was that he was opening for Carlos Mencia. Some chick blew the tour bus driver to try to get in the tour bus so she could fuck Carlos Mencia. And then Carlos, as a prank, got her in the bedroom, got all her clothes off, told her to wait right here, turn the lights down, and then sent Brad Williams in to rape her. Good one. A hilarious gag from two titans of comedy. Brad Williams' big defense for him. And she's right as well. That was a mad story that he shared. I don't know. Maybe it's podcasting because you want to, when you're drunk or you're trying to make people laugh and you want to make them entertained. I did not believe my ears when I heard that story. Like, it's crazy. So this girl wants to fuck Carlos Mencia. They, he leads her on that they're going to hook up. He turns off the lights and says, I'm going to come back. And then Brad Williams sneaks in and fucks her instead. Supposedly she continued anyway, I think, and she realized what it was him. It wasn't him anyway. But Jesus Christ, mate, that is basically rape. <laughs> That's basically rape. That isn't not like what what else is that? Like just jumping into somebody's bed. That's like equivalent to the the Joey Diaz story. Again, I love Joey Diaz, but that story Joey Diaz shared on a podcast where he said allegedly like he jumped he um he hopped in a woman's window or something, a neighbor or something, and and and, and started to eat her out when she was sleeping. Do you remember that story? Ages ago, back in the day in the podcast, I... <sighs> ...himself was that the story was fake because no victim ever came forward. I'm like, she's probably dead. <laughs> um, I know I would be. <laughs> if that shit happened to me, I'd... Oh, yeah. Um, who's asking about Schultz? Um, is it Corky Vanderhaven? If I'm not mistaken, Schultz's accusations was from an ex-girlfriend that he had. Uh, long-term girlfriend i think the one before he met his wife she so basically alleged abuse so basically he was just being rude and a bit of a dickhead and i think there might have been some physical altercations involved there and she i think wrote a song about it or something she's a musician i don't know what it was but i remember covering it ages ago about it um but it wasn't that deep i don't think so i don't think so um what people saying here, when his special came out, apparently people were bugging his ex and he snapped and revealed that in a sheer torn four men of abuse he put up with her spilling the face because there's too much to make up here. Yeah, cool. Then let's continue. Clear a beer bong full of Drano in five seconds. Oh yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. That's what I remember. Dash X says, Yeah, he would um he he got back at her by cleaning his shoes with her toothbrush that she brushed her teeth with and he didn't tell her. <laughs> That's some fucked up for shit, but again, I don't know if that counts as you being a piece of shit, you know what I mean? Seconds. Fuck out of here. That bitch killed herself, went to heaven, told God what happened, and then God was like, don't worry, girl, I got you. I'm gonna meet to Brad Williams on the day his daughter is born. Jesus Christ. Uh, Aziz Ansari, that was controversial, but what no one is really talking about is the fact that like he was 35 and she was 22. I feel like if you were to run back that whole date with a woman who was the same age as Aziz, he would not have gotten me to. Like a 35 year old woman is not gonna be like, Aziz was pressuring me to blow him and then I got sad and I didn't want to and now I'm telling my story. You know, like <laughs> a 35 year old woman is just gonna be like, hey Aziz, I've been sucking your dick for a couple of minutes now, but I actually just changed my mind. <laughs> you, you didn't notice because your head was back and your eyes were closed, but I already called an Uber. I'm going to leave now, and that is the last you will hear from that bitch, okay? You can't go on a date with a 22-year-old and then turn around like, she embarrassed me in public. That's what they do. <laughs> I'm not going to waste any time talking about Joey Diaz because he'll be dead in a week. Jesus Christ. A 
Eliza Schlesinger. Uh, she didn't meet to anyone, but did you guys know that in one of her early specials she uses the N-word? <laughs> there are some white people who use the N-word with this energy, you know, this now is my chance energy <laughs> that I do not fuck with <laughs> at all. <laughs> Speaking of using the N-word, Neil Brennan. Uh, Neil Brennan used to use the N-word a lot, but I'm not gonna give him any shit for it because I'm only half black. And I don't think that uh, I have the authority to tell Dave Chappelle's white friend whether or not he can say nigga. <laughs> like, I can tell Eliza whatever I want, you know? <laughs> I can fucking lay into Eliza, but if I tell Neil no and then Dave says it's fine, I think I've been overruled. <laughs> Um, here is my impression of Neil Brennan on his podcast talking about women. These gold digging attention whores yeah. deserve equal pay. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, whose side are you on? <laughs> Should listen to the podcast How Neil Feel if you want to watch a grown ass man stick one foot on being an ally to women and another foot being a toxic man and then desperately try to keep his balance like a goddamn baby giraffe. <laughs> Chris Rock said that he thinks that rape would be less frequent if women wouldn't drink or hang out around drunk men. And a lot of people believe that. I used to believe that. Jesus so Christ. let's break it down. If women can't hang out around drunk guys, that means women can't go to bars, clubs, concerts, college. Uh, <laughs> raves, music festivals, most weddings, some funerals, fucking Applebee's. <laughs> but let's say that women actually did stop going to all of those places. Like, what do you think rapists are gonna do? Just get out the game? <laughs> no, they're gonna go to wherever it is your female friends are drinking and then we're right back to square one. Brendan Schaub is a fucking idiot. <laughs> I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but whenever I picture Brendan Schaub in my mind, his eyes are crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever heard Brendan Schaub speak, but he has the perfect voice for how dumb he is. <laughs> I saw him doing stand up and I was like, what the fuck is he doing? But then I remembered he used to do martial arts and he's been punched in the head a thousand times. And I was like, oh, he's doing his best. <laughs> Brendan Schaub's next comedy album is going to be called My Wife is Mexican and I Hate Her Guts. <laughs> uh, Andrew Santino, that fucking gay slur. <laughs> you, can only <laughs> you can only use homophobic language if you're gay. I see Andrew Santino and I'm like, hang on, I'm going to go fuck a woman and when I get back, I'm going to describe your behavior. <laughs> Santino has this joke where uh, he says that black men can't marry white women because white women are too petite and dainty. He says black men have to marry black women, like big, strong, tough black women so that they give birth to big, strong, tough professional athletes. Jesus I'm Christ. Like, when you're talking about breeding black people for physical prowess, how you don't feel like a slave owner, dude? <laughs> <laughs> like that shit happened to one of my ancestors. The last person in my family to be a slave had 500 kids. Jesus. But some of my relatives try to say that we're like distantly related to Kobe Bryant. I'm like, 500 kids? We are related to everyone. <laughs> All right, I'm out here dating a white guy because all of these niggas is my cousin. <laughs> uh, Whitney Cummings, I love it when white women dye their hair blue as a cry for help. Um, <laughs> I wanted to have a part in this show where I was like Bobby Lee, you know, like all menacingly. But then I was just going to go like, I love him and I hope he's having a nice day. And then move on to shitting on other comics. But uh then you hear about Bobby Lee, and it's like, God damn, you cannot get past at the comedy store until you at least bite a woman. <laughs> uh, if you guys have been to the comedy store, you know, like they have the wall with all the comedians' names on it. Like, as you're walking in, you can literally just go, one, two, three, this one punched a lady. Like... <laughs> Every few months, somebody takes a sledgehammer and destroys Donald Trump's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which if you haven't seen it, it's right next to Kevin Spacey. The comedy store better pray that no one starts sledgehammering the names of sexual predators or else the walls of that building would look like fucking Swiss cheese. It was wild because like a lot of comics were defending Chris D'Elia. It's weird with these free speech comics, because like, when it comes to rape jokes, they're like, I can say whatever I want, whenever I want, and if you don't like it, that's your problem. 
But when it comes to rape accusations, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you saying the the comedian who punched a woman was Joe Rogan dash X? When did Joe Rogan punch a punch a woman? Jesus Christ! I don't, I didn't know about that. What's up, Andrew? Once once Red Bar's back, Santino's finished. Oh yeah, shit! Do you remember the way Red Bar was going at Santino? Because I think he got some woman who allegedly was hooking up with Santino. She messaged in and basically spilled all the gossip about him and how he conducts. Him. I think I had to tune out because I'm not very comfortable with hearing people you know, creep on people on DMs and stuff via, po it's just, it just, it just makes me feel uneasy because I can, I, I can only imagine if somebody revealed my, my DMs, I'd be fucking distraught. So I couldn't do it, but Red Bar absolutely went after Santino, man, absolutely ripped into him. Um, to the point where, did Santino threaten him also with legal action or am I, or am I mistaken? Did Santino from French, I don't know, but, or maybe he threatened to kind of meet up with him because aren't they from the same place? Isn't Santino from Chicago too? maybe um but yeah she talks about it of course. yep I, I can dm you the pod she talks about it crushed her windpipe and mitzi saved her from tim from jail <gasps> oh my god 